Amen. We're trying to reach as many people as we can uh, with the truth of the gospel. Amen. Uh, we're yeah. Some yeah. members, and we're going to start making the recordings available for people that can't join us on Wednesday nights. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's part of our uh, outreach. Uh, let me thank uh, each of you. Amen. Let me thank each of you for your prayers and your concerns as we went to celebrate the life of Reverend Jerome Jackson, the first senior. As It's ironic that we are in our normal week of revival, and he's been with us on several occasions, mm -hmm. uh, several occasions, mm -hmm. just blessed us, and uh, just a, a mentor and a good friend of mine. I was part of what's called the what's called the Christmas Fellowship, and it was a group of pastors and their wives, amen, and we fellowship uh, regularly uh, at Christmas and celebrate together. So, so we just joined together and celebrate his, his life in a wonderful way, and we know where he is. He's on the south side of heaven, uh, looking amen. for some greens and probably at a Cracker Barrel yeah. restaurant. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and, uh, Cracker Barrel was his was his office. Amen. Precious memories. And, and somebody asked me why I like Cracker Barrel is because of Riven Jackson. Yeah. He got me hooked on Cracker Barrel. <laughs> And for uh, we've been out in New York for about 22 years now. And every time I go home, uh, he made his business uh, to talk with me or either to have lunch or breakfast or something with me. And so he's, he was that kind of friend to, to me. And, and Reverend Deb, uh, uh, friends of ours, and his wife, Marsha, and his children. Amen. So I thank Reverend Deb. She was uh, uh, right beside and we were sharing a great loss uh, together. Amen. But uh, but we know where he is. He's resting with the Lord. And so, uh, what a wonderful song to be singing, uh, Sister Deborah, uh, before I made those remarks. Amen. 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 Uh, we want to encourage you as we move forward. Uh, we are, uh, do I have sheet screen sharing as well? Uh, Minister Letitia, let me see. Not yet. Almost. Here we go. That's that's Brother Caesar. That's not my screen. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Hey, Amen. Make me a co-host or something. That way I can uh, pop some stuff up. Amen. You are a co-host at this time. Okay. Thank you. Amen. And the uh, outline is in the chat box. Amen. So so here's our. I tried to get it real big because sometimes people say they can't see. And so I put it real big today. Uh, and so we're, we're continuing with our Bible study and discussion group. Uh, theme for the May, for May is uh, I want to keep discipleship in front of us. So I want to talk about discipleship and the family. Amen. Discipleship and the family. Uh, the family should be a teaching unit. Amen. And uh, many times the, the home uh, helps really the home should lay the foundation uh, and families make up the church body. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so we really need to pray about uh, strengthening the families and working with families. And even if your children are grown, uh, I'm going to send these Bible studies to my uh, children. Amen. Uh, so, so to encourage them in in their uh, family life and uh, development of their family. Uh, so we, uh, this week's Bible study was on uh, family shift and it was focusing on, uh, and I'm so talk talking about the Bible reading plan, family shift. And it talked about shift the drift. And it talked about how families are drifting apart nowadays. Amen. And you know how drifting, drifting happens sometimes unconsciously. You don't intend to drift, but it's just you wake up and you're apart, uh, whether it's a marriage, whether it's parents and children or whatever. And he talked about there are some reasons that the drift happens, that the drifts happens because of disappointment, because of regrets, because of isolation, because of frustration and because of tension. And so on the, on the first day, he talked about reasons for drifting uh, and why families drift apart, why married couples drift apart. And so uh, we want to encourage that. And he says, we want to we want to shift the drift. We want to stop the drift and help families come back together. And in that uh, reading plan, he gives us five ways to do that. Uh, the first way he says is to have a shift in direction, shift in direction. Amen. Did anybody get to read the plan for this week? 
All right, that's why I'm going over. Yes. I saw, I saw all those hands go up. I just know those hands were going up and thumbs were going up and claps were going up. All right. Uh, but, but when he talks about the shift of direction, he talks about that you need to have a, a vision or a mission statement that, that gives your family something to focus on, a vision or a mission statement. And he said, where there is no vision, remember the Bible says, there you go, the people, people perish. perish. People perish. So the family needs to have some type of vision uh, so it can shift this direction and, and can, can all be going in the same direction toward the same vision and mission. All right. The second thing he says is to shift in focus. And this one was very important to me because I really want to work this one in my own family. And that was the uh, when you shift in focus, he says your family needs to have a set of core values core values, the values, because values determine your behavior, okay? You need to instill values in your children and some, have some, some common beliefs and values that you have in common so that you can focus on these values, all right? Uh, then shift in motivation. And when he says that's, that's like the, uh, I believe that's the fourth day. And when you shift in motivation, he says your family needs to have goals, passion and guess what struggles sometimes you got to go through some things together to to build the relationship of the family to test the family to develop the family okay shift in motivation goals common goals uh common passion amen and common struggles don't be afraid of that word struggles amen i i used to uh, tell my kids Sometimes I would say no, and I'd say no, I'd say I have to tell you no, so that you know that you're going to hear no sometime in your life. You know, everything is not going to be easy for you. Uh, you know, sometimes they had to work for things, or they had to earn things, because I wanted to teach them some values, okay? So goals, passions, and struggles have to do with motivation. And then he says uh, in that uh, presentation, he talks about a shift in reinforcement. And that's a, that's a good one because he talks about the value of friendship. And the men have that verse that he uses as iron sharpens iron. Amen. Sometimes you need, you need people to help you, uh, to come alongside you. Uh, 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 I believe we had in our men's ministry very early on, we said, uh, I think it might have been Reverend Jackson or somebody may have said, you need somebody to push you. Yeah. Uh, someone that can... Uh, you know, I, I call them to get in your face. There's some people that, that can say certain things to me in certain ways to get my attention when I'm off track. And so you need that person to push you. Okay. You need a, a, a friend, uh, somebody that, that's, that's going to tell you the truth, no matter what. All right. And then the last thing he says, you need a shift in, in purpose. And I like the last three things he put in that shift in purpose. He says, uh, uh, we need to love our families unconditionally, have unconditional love in yes. the family, love unconditionally. Uh, he says we need to love intentionally, all right? And then when it comes to children, let them go purposely. Let them go purposely. And I like that one because I, I just left uh, Jen and I just told my son-in-law, Oliver, I say, when I gave it to you, she's yours. You responsible. You know, I talk, talk to my kids. I say, you know, you're grown up now. You're grown now. You got to make decisions. You got to make choices. Okay. You, you have to make some good decisions and, and have a direction for your life. So I think this family shift is a good one to start on. Uh, and I want to encourage you to talk to you, take some time and talk to your, 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 even if they adult children, talk to them. Talk to your adult children uh, about life and, and, and try to pour into them and encourage them and, and remind them of the values, remind them to keep God at the center of their, their lives. You know how we always say, as for me and my house, we will yes, serve the Lord. Lord. And, and if you're a younger person with younger people in there, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. And so, so families are very important. And so with this month, we're going to be focusing on the family and our reading plan is going to be related to family. 
all right? Discipleship and the family, because that's one of the ways that we disciple people is through families, all right? Are there any questions on the, uh, on the reading plan? Any comments on the reading plan? Anybody get to look at it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't find it. You can't mm -hmm. find it? No, the one I have, it mm -hmm. says six vital, six vital elements of disciple making. That's it's not uh, just that's yeah. two that's two weeks ago. Oh. This is this is from last week. I, I, I don't know. Okay, she put it in the chat. So maybe you all didn't get it good. So you all can read it again. I just gave you an overview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank all you. right. <laughs> okay. Uh, family shift five something. Uh, let me pull it up again. Let me read it for you. Family shift, the five step plan to stop drifting and start living with greater intention. That's what it is for, was for last week. Yeah. Okay. All right. Amen. 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 All right. And she put it in the chat. So, uh, you know, it's in there uh, and it, it'll be posted on the website. We, we set them up for the whole month this, this month. So we already got them already selected for the whole month. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so I'm going to give you a chance to go back and review that again. And uh, again, I'm trying, if I, if you don't talk about something, uh, people won't pay attention to it. So I'm going to make sure that you all start uh, following that reading plan because pastor going to bring it up. Somebody ought to say, amen. 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 That, that's, that's one of the ways amen. that we can be held accountable. If we don't, if we never talk about what we're learning, then, then we won't really learn. Okay. Uh, this is handout number three. Now I'm circling around, so don't panic. I'm circling around. I know we didn't finish handout number two. Don't panic. It's gonna is we're gonna get there. Amen. Uh, and so Jim, Jesus demonstrates his authority. We're gonna look for specifically toward the end at Mark chapter two, uh, verse one through chapter three, verse six. All right. And Mark chapter two, verse twenty-two says. Uh, let's read it together. Go on, let me hear you all's wonderful vo voices. I know it's gonna sound crazy, but let's just read it together anyway. Mm -hmm. And no and one, no, no one man man put his new wine into wine the old wine bottle, bottles, or else, else the, the new wine bursts into the new wine, 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 wine is spilled, wine is spilled wine and the wine skin is ruined. Be marred. But new, new wine must be put into the new, new wine skin. All right, all right. Come on, give yourselves a hand. At least you can read. Come on. Amen. Not for the ability to read. Amen. Amen. So, so as we look forward. Uh, and move forward. Let me get in here a little bit. Uh, get my thing to move. Come on up. Ah, here he goes. Ah, right, I'm 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 gonna be burning your brain a little bit today. Are we ready? Y'all ready for it? Amen. Amen. All right. As long as you don't have a dog barking or the TV going in the background, you can keep yourself unmuted so you can comment when I ask these wonderful questions. All right, here we go. Uh, 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 what are we learning? Okay, what are we learning? The goal is uh, we're in Bible study, and I know we need to be learning some things. So let me just do a couple of things. And I, I just want to uh, talk to us about learning for a minute. Everybody put... put uh, put this down. I got my famous whiteboard and just so I can, okay, put this down. This is one of my favorite little illustrations. When we talk about learning, I tell teach uh, teachers this little formula, L, max, L equals C over A comma K comma S. All right, everybody got that down? Learning. Yes. Okay, somebody got a little echo in the back. So we'll keep working with it. Okay, so now you already know what the L means. L stands for what? Learning. Learning. All right, learning. So what does it mean when you learn something? When you learn something, it equals C. All right, anybody know what the C stand for? 
uh, for him. Okay, comprehend. That's a good answer. Good shot. Okay, anybody else? Come on. Capture. Clarification. Clarification. Wonderful answers. Come on, you got some good C words out there. Come on. Commitment. Yeah, commitment. Change. Okay. So, so learn equals when you when you're learning something, for you to really learn something, there has to be a change. For you to learn something, there has to be a change. Okay. All right. And it's a change in A. Anybody know what the A could mean? Attitude. There attitude. You go. There you go. All right. Attitude. So one thing that can, if you learn, your attitude can change. Your attitude can change. All right. Anybody know what the K might stand for? Knowledge. Knowledge. Oh, there you go. Knowledge. <laughs> All right, did somebody give the answers out? Did somebody copy my quiz? <laughs> <laughs> okay, attitude. And the last thing is a skill. Um, okay, when you learn, there has to be a change. Okay, <laughs> there has to be a change. So if I'm learning something, I'm changing some <laughs> kind of way. Now, y'all know I'm going somewhere with this, right? Mm -hmm. So pick it up because I'm, I'm trying to link it all together. Now, remember, we've always said that the purpose, purpose of Bible study, we never said we were just studying the Bible to study, but the purpose of Bible, there you go, somebody said life change. is, there you go, life, life change, life, life change. Life change. the purpose of Bible study is life, life change. Or transformation. transformation. There you go. So when we're studying the Bible, we are studying to learn. We're studying to be transformed. Is life's change or transformation? So when we're doing all of this, you got to make sure that you're getting you some takeaways. How is this? In, how is this study impacting your attitude? Okay. How you see life. Okay, when you know God, you ought to see the world differently from people that don't know God. Knowing God helps you see the world differently. As a disciple of Christ, your your is what's called a worldview. Your worldview should be changing. Y'all with me? Yes. Amen. That's what some of the problem is today: is that Christians don't have a different worldview from non-Christians. You can't tell Christians from, from non-Christians anymore. All right. True. That's okay. true. So we're trying to we're trying to 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 not waste this little crisis we went through. We're looking at some stuff and we 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 want to change it. Okay? We want to change. All right? So so as we're doing this, I want us to think about uh uh, and go over some things. What are we learning? The first thing is, what is the gospel? Because the gospel, Paul says, is God is the power of God unto salvation. So in our lesson, what do we say the gospel is? Uh, what? Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Yeah. Okay. No. But but it doesn't. The good news doesn't fit after a. Oh. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get this entered. The gospel is a person. Okay? Right. The gospel is a person. Jesus. That's what Mark 1 and 1 tells us. Jesus. The beginning of the gospel and the person is Jesus. 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 Christ. All right. Wait a minute. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, so when we get to Christ, Christ is what? He's the son of God. No, Christ is a title. Christ is a title. And Christ can mean the Messiah, mm -hmm. the, the anointed one. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it? Yes. So number one, the gospel is found in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and Mark is telling us that the Messiah is 
son of God. The, the son, son of God. Of God. The son of God. Mm -hmm. All right. And as we read on through Mark, there's one more thing I told you that you would find out as we study Mark. He is the promised servant of the Lord. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Because if you're not straight on Jesus, you're going to be in trouble. Amen. All right. So, so, so we're looking at Mark one and one to get that. We got most of that from Mark one and one. Yes. And Jesus says, I did not, I did not come to be served, but to That's serve true. and to give my yeah. life a ransom yes. mm -hmm. for many. Amen. Okay. All right, now somebody was giving us when we said the gospel is the good news. There we go. That's where we get the good news. The gospel is the good news. Yeah. Good news. The good news of Jesus. Okay, all right. And we got that up at the top, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's it's the good news of Jesus. And so the good news has to do with what? The good news is salvation. Our liberation. Mm -hmm. When I think about what, what is the good news about? Uh, uh, Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, uh, liberates us so that we can follow God. Mm -hmm. He rescues us from sin. Set us free. Set us free. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. For God so loved the world. Of mankind. Right? God mm -hmm. so loved the world that he what? Gave. He gave his, his only begotten son. God. son. And so that we may be saved. There you go. All right. Believe in him shall not perish, but have what? Or eternal life. And so yeah. that's the good news. It's this, it's this liberation that we find in the life of Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. Now we work in it. We work in it, right? We work in it. Okay. Now, what what action is required in response to Jesus' message to Christ's message. Repentance. Okay. All right. Now read that. Uh, look at that verse real good. Look at it real good. Okay. Surrender. Go, 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 go right to the Bible. Go right to the Bible. Repent and believe. Confess. Repent and believe. Repentance. Okay. So we got repentance. And believe. Okay. All right. And here's what I want us to see. The word, because we use in the Bible, right? And. So it's not just repentance by itself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. no, it's repentance and. Believe. And. and. And believe. Believe what? The gospel. The gospel. All right. Believe right. in the gospel. Okay. Yes. All right. And that's the good news of salvation and liberation, which is a person, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's believing in the person, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. He's the promised servant of the Lord. The right. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, now when you believe that, the repentance means it's a it's a Greek word that means to to turn from it an existing object of truth of trust. All right, watch this, because this is how you put it put it together uh, when it when the when the person reads it in the Greek to turn from an existing object of trust. Mm -hmm. So we were trusting in ourselves. We were trying to work out our own salvation. Amen. Okay? To turn from, from self, and watch this, and believe. Now, when I believe, it means what? To commit oneself to God. All right. Watch. You're right, though wholeheartedly that that greek word 
believe means to commit oneself wholeheartedly. There you go. All right. To watch this. And, and God is the answer, but I'm giving you the technical Greek definition to an object of faith. And for us, we're going to say God. Okay. So, so when I repent, I'm turning from self and I'm turning to God. All right. When I repent, I'm turning from self and then I'm going to do what? I'm going to believe mm -hmm. in the gospel and that is trusting in God. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, mm -hmm. so it's a turning and trusting. Okay. Turning and trusting. Any questions so far? So far. So far, so good. So, yes. Yes. Okay. So we said in when we were wrapping up the last lesson, we said when a person, when a person responds to the call to discipleship, it is a call to accept. Watch this. A radical change, right? Mm -hmm. That's a radical change. A radical change in one's way of life. And that's where we're missing the boat, is that radical change. Mm -hmm. That radical change, all right? And I want us to be looking for that as we study the life of Jesus, okay? I want us to be looking. This this is picking up at the end of where we were, and uh, when I uh, there's the recommended reading, emotionally healthy discipleship. All right, and in that book, uh, the author talks about four failures that undermine deep discipleship, and it keeps people from becoming spiritually mature. Okay, these are four things he identifies. And, and I'm going to share them with you uh, uh, that, that helps people, that keep people from maturing spiritually. Do you believe we have a challenge with spiritual maturity? Yes. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. So here's some things that happen in our culture. We tolerate emotional immaturity we allow people not to grow up amen come on we tolerate emotional immaturity mm -hmm. you know we just say that's just the way people are they're not going to change and the whole point of a disciple's life is what to change to create change, change yeah. to change all right mm -hmm. Stay with me. Stay with me. We choose, watch this, and here's what a lot is happening. We choose to do for God. We're busy doing for God. Y'all with me? Stay with mm -hmm. me. Rather than, watch this. This is going to blow your mind. Rather than, and when I read this one, I was like, wow, than being with God. Think about that. We're so busy doing things for God that we don't have time to be with God. Mm -hmm. wow. And remember, it's a relationship. It's a rela discipleship is really about a relationship with God. God yeah. frees us to relate to Him mm -hmm. uh, better. All right. This Ooh. other one. Uh, any comments or questions? That was pretty powerful on that one because you can find a lot in our human relationships that people will not give quality time in, in doing, being with um, people, a person, no family members, but they do a lot for the family members, which is not the same. Right. This is the same, I, I correlated with, um, which is this statement here. It's pretty powerful. Yes, and, 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 and people are starving for a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. right you know, they're, they're starving for the human contact mm -hmm. uh, uh when i went home this time and when i've been on my recent vacations with the kids i've been trying to make sure that i was present mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, because i've gone home or i've traveled before and guess what i've not really been present right 
I was doing or, or thinking about church or thinking about other things. And I missed some wonderful opportunities in life because I was absent. I, I mean, I was there physically, but I wasn't there mentally. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know, thinking about somebody else. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, and I'm trying to get that back. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to what, uh, enjoy the moment more. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and there's a quality, there's, there's a, a connectedness that happens when you enjoy the moment more. Uh, yeah. this, yes. Uh, there's some building that goes on all right uh, he says uh we ignore the oops sorry the hidden treasure and this is one of church history and what he states is we stop at the bible but but he says that you know there's thousands of there's over a thousand plus years of church history that we don't pay attention to Mm -hmm. of things that have happened in the church through the years that we really ignore because we're, we, we stop with the Bible and okay. we miss, we miss a lot of things that have happened mm -hmm. in the, in the lives of the people of God experiences or mm -hmm. things that they're going through. So many times we're repeating what, what other generations of the church have already done. Yeah. Okay. Y'all staying with me? I'm trying to count yes. who's, mm -hmm. who's, uh, who's, who's staying. All mm -hmm. right. The last one <laughs> is a failure. We define success wrongly. Amen. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of people are trying to be successful uh, in the church on the basis of the world standards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm bigger better mm, that's true uh, numbers um, Pastor. yes um, we yes. define the church uh what, what, is, what did you have up there we define the church wrongly wrongly, wrongly. wrongly. success success I, I believe that comes from a lot of us that really don't know our history of the church Mm -hmm. during the Jim Crow era. Okay. We as a people, mm -hmm. if you're from the South of Devil, and I say we should know our history, mm -hmm. the only way we could assemble together was in the church. Okay. And back then, not even the cops would come in the church to okay. rescue you. All, you. all we had to do is try to make it to the church. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you know, there was a period during the civil rights movement when things got out of hand and they bombed the church and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a time that black folks, more than two, couldn't assemble themselves together unless they was in the church. Okay, all right. So, so we've lost, because we've neglected that history, the history, that's correct. Because we neglected the history, we, we've we lost the significance of the church in, in who we are as a people. As a people. And, and how the church has helped us to overcome, how the church has helped us, you Amen. know, and, and, and even beyond that, how God brought us through things. Amen. The, the Amen. So we basically, uh, today, the church is being pushed to the side. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right, and so so that's the struggle that we're having. So these are four things that that are undermining uh, deep discipleship, uh, getting people to grow deeper. Amen. So we have a uh, this writer talks about we have a very shallow discipleship. Yeah. Amen. Oh Lord, can I say something? I don't know how how this is going to be, but when uh, Reverend Smith was preaching Sunday, when she talked about Moses, how he went into the wilderness for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I thought about my life 10 years ago, how I was in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And then how the Lord brought him back mm -hmm. to the people, his people, and how the Lord brought me back into my community where when I was growing up, I was such a devil. When I say devil, I don't mean it, don't look at it that way. Like I was a hard-headed kid. 
And okay. now the Lord done brought me back in a whole different way. Okay. This is the history that I'm getting through the Bible, the okay. how I can relate mm -hmm. from the Old Testament and I can understand it for my life today. Okay. Okay. Well, well, that's what we mean by by how God, how God, uh, how sometimes we avoid or uh, we put a negative on our struggles. Amen. And sometimes God is developing us through our struggles. Okay. Amen. Right? Amen. Developing Amen. us through the struggles. So, so again, we wonder, you know, and we we pointed other people, but we also have to hold a mirror up to ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and say how deep how deep are we how how committed are we we how how is our relationship with God yes. so before I, before I get the speck out of your eye I got to get the beam yeah. out of my own eye yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. okay and and that's why I'm saying like like and I I also start the one of doing for God versus being with God. Looking at looking at my prayer time, looking at my study time, and um, uh, when we talk, you're going to see that I'm going to talk about slowing your life down, so that so that you can spend time with God. Yeah. Slowing your life down, so the quality of life, you know, it's a difference between something that's cooked in a slow cooker mm -hmm. and something that's cooked in a microwave. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And a lot of people have microwave, microwave religion. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right away. Amen. Instead of the slow cooking uh, process. Yes. You know, that where, 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 the, where, where you know God and God knows you. Y'all getting me? Y'all following me? Amen. Yes. Okay. So, so he's going to, uh, so I'm, uh, I'm going to list for us. Okay. I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. I'm going to list for us in there. Uh, whoops, I went all the way too far. Seven marks of, of a, a biblical di discipleship that transforms lives. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and that's why I said to us, uh, uh, read this book, The Most Emotionally Healthy Discipleship, because that's where I'm getting this information from. And I'm just sharing with you without us having to do a whole book study. Okay, and I didn't want us to do a whole book study. I just wanted us to get some bits and pieces from there. But if you want to go deeper, let's see where my where my little thing at? It won't let me land right here. I need it to land. Okay, there we go. It won't land. Here we go. Just go on and write it down because it won't act right for a minute here. Pastor, you have to close that. You have to close header because you're in. You're in header. I'm in mm -hmm. header. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's not letting you type. You got to close that, and then you you'll be able to do what you need to do. Why did it's it do that? End. At the end. Why did it do that to me? Okay, close that. Thank you. I. Uh, you need some brilliant people out there. <laughs> Thank you, brilliant people. Mm. I listen, I ain't saying thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The, 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 the train, the, the, the uh, people with etiquette used to say, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, yeah. you didn't give me a chance. You're <laughs> welcome, Pastor. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm just waiting and waiting. <laughs> I muted myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. We're in this together. Okay. Amen. So seven marks, you all, seven marks. And I want you to think about these. Uh, and they go with some of the, what we talked about earlier. Number one, be before you do. Be before you do. Before you get all caught up in activity, work on your being. Be a child of God. Be a Christian. You know how we say act like a Christian? Mm -hmm. oh, be a Christian <laughs> from your essence, from who you are, okay? From your from your uh, your spirit, amen. Be before you do. Be before you do. Be amen. before you do. 
Okay, some of us are trying to do the right thing, but we haven't changed. Our will hasn't changed. Amen. Our heart hasn't changed. That's true. Our attitude hasn't changed. Amen. Amen. Now, this is a deep one. Follow the, watch this, crucified. Follow the crucified Jesus, not the Americanized. <laughs> Amen. Okay. There, there's true. a Jesus that 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 has no suffering. You know, there's a Jesus that always that the Americanized Jesus is always one to be number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Americanized Jesus, bigger, better. The, the what what America calls successful in our culture. And, and many times, Jesus is exactly opposite of what the culture is. Yes. Amen. All right? When I was growing up, they used to say, don't let, don't let the world get in the church. Mm. You know what? Wow. Today, today, the world is all through the church. Wow. Yes. yes. That's the truth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Somebody going to love this. Embrace God's gift of limits mm. you, can't, you can't be everything to everybody you don't have to do it all yourself mm -hmm. amen we all have limitations come on you don't have to be the hero amen that's the truth okay and that's what stresses us out and burns us out is when we're doing more than god intends for us to do Amen. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. This one is, is a little difficult. The discover, he likes this word, the hidden treasures of grief and loss. That sometimes in your grief and loss, uh, God can teach you something. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe God that can, God can develop you, Amen. Uh, through your grief and loss, Amen. Okay. Number five. Put a star by this one. Did I tell you put star by anything else? No. Good. Put a star by this one. Make love the measure of spiritual maturity if you can't love you're not spiritually mature amen make love the measure of spiritual maturity and he actually spends the most of the book talking about these seven marks and how to develop them okay here this is for somebody to stuck, break the power of the past. Mm. You're not what you were. That's a good one. You're Amen. not what you were. Break the power. Break the power of Amen. the past. Amen. Labels and things. That's not who you are. You, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Yes. yes. Old things have yeah. passed away. Behold, mm -hmm. all things have become new. Break the power of the past. Break the Can power. we put a star by that one? You can put two by that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this is a difficult one to do. Lead out of weakness. And I was working on this word, vulnerability. Not 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 heavy handed, not not powerful, not not mm. not strong arming people, mm. not forcing your way on people. Mm. Again, totally opposite. Jesus' way is totally so opposite right. of the world's way. Mm -hmm. Take the other V out, Pastor. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all see how I get to type, and I just get going. Mm. I was busy trying to say the word. Mm instead of spell it all right <laughs> okay uh that's still wrong 
N E R A B I L I T Y. Oh, there it is. Thank you. You're welcome. I got to get it right. See how that, see how nice that was? That was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of the things is um, being vulnerable is very hard for a lot of, sometimes even for myself, for people in general, mm -hmm. to open yourself up mm -hmm. is difficult. So you put three stars behind that. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Okay. You have to take it from a humility point of view. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I can be humble and, you know, I just think being being vulnerable, you're opening up yourself for so much. Okay. That can go ahead. That can go so drastically wrong. It just, it opens up your, um, it opens you up. Okay. Now, we, now I, think, it, I think we as uh, individuals, mm -hmm. we're afraid to be hurt. Okay. We don't want to be hurt. So mm -hmm. we block we block being open as a uh, deacon pat says and that's what uh, becoming vulnerable you mm -hmm. don't you don't want to be hurt just like you know when you saying the the first one is like break the power of the past mm -hmm. and it's it is sometimes it's hard we don't let go of the past so we're holding on to the past so then we don't want to be vulnerable because we don't want past experiences to happen again if we don't break either one of those things, then how can we grow? That's right. Okay. That's, okay. Yeah, that's true. And I think it's in stages. I don't it think. Is. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's where the humility come in a little yeah. at a time. Okay. So, 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 so we become hard. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say uh, talking about myself personally, I don't think it's becoming hard. I think it's more protective. Okay. And, and so, so then you're in control instead of trusting God. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is dealing with other people or dealing with God. But, but in my, in my dealing, uh, he talks, man, it's, uh, he talks about learning how to rest in God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how to, how to relax with Jesus. Amen. Believing, believing that God is going to bring you through it. Amen. 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 So, so I can be obedient. I can be obedient to God. Yeah. Which may make me vulnerable at a time. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm trusting God and doing something impossible that He wants me to do. But to reach that other person, you know, I'm giving myself as an offering. Right. Okay. okay. But that's hard to do because I'm protecting myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but if it tells us to humble ourselves before the Lord, that's so that right. would be in your dealings with others, you no know, trusting him. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. See, that's but we but we can say that, but yes. do we do that? Do that. That's an individual basis. Exactly. Amen. So okay. it, Amen. It, it's, it's just it's just like with COVID, right? Mm -hmm. With all this happening in a year that we were on pause. So mm -hmm. I'm speaking for myself. Um, I've liked in those, in, you know, I'm not gonna say I was a control freak, but I like to, con I like to control. Ahead, say it, that, now I'm not a control freak, but <laughs> I'm just saying it's like, I, I, for me, I like to control my mm -hmm. outcomes of mm -hmm. what, of what I'm doing, you know, far be it as my career or mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. So mm -hmm. with COVID happening, you know, um, I had to reflect on that a lot, and I I I let go of a lot of a lot of things because I was out of control, and it was it was difficult for me because okay. I um I mean I didn't know where my income was coming from because I'm self-employed, you know uh, the, the I'm in the music industry. Just long story short, so you know that the entertainment industry was gone. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out, you know, what, I, what was going to happen. And I just, I just fell on my knees and asked God to help me because mm -hmm. I just, you know, it was nothing, it was nothing left for me to do, but do that. Cause it was nowhere to go. Okay. Yeah. So see, uh, God have to show us with this core, God have to show us that we are not in control. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we mm-hmm. think we are. But the same thing Sister Taylor said. Mm-hmm. The Bible said the world take humbleness as weakness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you hear what I just said? Mm-hmm. We take a humble person as a weak person. But that is uh, that is somebody that you shouldn't mess with. That is power. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible speaks of humble yourself before the Lord and they do see God will elevate you. Mm-hmm. Amen. And also, Sister Monica, with regards to what you know, you said with your outcome, even you do know that I know you do, you're very smart, that prior to COVID, even though you thought you were controlling your outcome, it still was God. That's and right. Absolutely. Oh, yes. I, 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 absolutely. And you're absolutely right about that. But like when you're in when you're in the when you're not when when things are running smoothly and the world is normal, um, and this is just human, you right. you yeah. don't you don't you don't put God in it. But we we have the faith that the Lord is blessing, but you think you are doing it. So what I'm saying, like for myself, it was a learning experience that one, he sustained me, two, um, my faith has grown even stronger because I, like I said, I had to relinquish. I was just like, you know, I, I, I was humbled. I felt, I was like, you know, help me, you know, because mm-hmm. I have nowhere else to turn but to you. Right? right. And so therefore, um, you know, like, you know, with, with lead out of weakness and vulnerability, I was vulnerable, you know, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. say, you know, yeah. And at the time I was weak because mm-hmm. I was in despair, but at the right. same time coming out of it, I'm stronger. Mm-hmm. I'm a better Amen. person. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's what I mean. mm-hmm. I'm a better, mm-hmm. you know, I look at life differently. Amen. Um, um, it's not all about money and prestige because you know when when you're growing going up the corporate ladder as I was growing, yeah, that's that's what you put important. You know, mm-hmm. that you was know, a good point, Monica. You look at life differently. That's you look what at life just differently. told us. Knowing yeah. God makes you see the you world. You look at life. You look at life differently. And I yeah. have I have more now than I did when I thought I was successful. Right. Mm-hmm. right. See? Right. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. That, that's but again, that's see, this is the discussion that we have to have because if we go back up here, okay, uh when we go back up just just to the repentance, yes, mm-hmm. turn from from an existing object of trust, we were trusting mm-hmm. in our own yes. ability. Yes, yes all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then what? When when you you had to repent, you had to turn, and you had to what? Believe. Shift your trust. Mm-hmm. 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 Your trust yes. moved from from you being in control to to what? Realizing, God being realizing. In that God is in mm-hmm. control, but not only realizing it in your head, but what? Really trusting God. Yes. And yes. In, in your heart. It's and in my heart. heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't just mm-hmm. saying it. I really truly mm-hmm. believed it, and it was in my heart. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. Okay. All right. And so that, that, that took you to this deeper place we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to get us in our church to, to create a culture now. All right. Cause, cause uh, 30 of us are hearing this. Okay. 30 of us are hearing this. And, and so what is an emotionally healthy disciple? Okay. Would somebody just read that so they can hear somebody else's voice? <laughs> An emotionally healthy disciple slows down to be with Jesus, goes beneath the surface of their lives to be deeply transformed by Jesus, and offers their life as a gift to the world for Jesus. Wow. Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay. First of all, you slow down mm-hmm. to be with Jesus, the relationship. And, and uh, listen at this, uh, all you especially listen, put it in the context of the conversation we were just listening to. Goals be what? Beneath the Beneath surface. The surface. Mm-hmm. Because that's where that's where the real change has to come. It's the beneath the surface. You know, we see the stuff on the surface. Mm-hmm. But what's on the surface is only there because of what's going on. Right. Mm-hmm. 
right? Yeah. One of the things, yeah. yeah. One of the things I could say for myself, mm -hmm. I was really self-reliant mm -hmm. on everything. Mm -hmm. And as I grew in Christ, I was able to know that it wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. That was making these, these, um, these stepping stones in my life. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when I think when I was, cause I wanted to go back to, when I speak about being vulnerable to people, I think mm -hmm. going underneath the surface of my life, mm -hmm. I've been hurt so much when I opened myself up. I mean, really things just thrown back into my face. Mm -hmm. And it was just hurtful. So now I don't open up as much to people, but I mm -hmm. definitely open up to God. Amen. All right. But 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 watch this. God wants you to give your life as a gift to the world. And that's where it is. That's where I'm at right mm -hmm. now. I'm 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 getting there. Okay. Amen. You know, but it's very difficult for you know. For me to open up because when yeah. I tell you, you know, not going into it, but I have been just unnecessarily hurt. And so, so then, then we gotta when we get to this, uh, uh, where is that one? Break the power of the past. Breaking the power of the past, but also uh, let me go back up. Got some wonderful pieces here. Make love the measure of spiritual Number maturity. Four. I'd say number four also, Pat. Number four, yeah. Okay. Discover, yeah, that's it. That's the one yeah. I was thinking about. The, discover the wild treasures. The hidden treasures of grief, grief and loss. Yes. When you're giving yourself, when you're pouring, mm -hmm. see, love is really about pouring yourself out mm -hmm. and giving yourself for the benefit of the other with, yes. with, without regard to uh, you gaining. So I'm not I'm not loving to get. I'm oh, giving to help the other. Okay. All right. I got yeah. that part, but I okay. love to I I give and I open myself up. Is just when you get crushed, then I mm -hmm. go into something else. And but, so, but if you were to look back on it, Pat, I'm sure if you took inventory and back on the times you were disappointed and hurt that each time that happened to you it made you stronger yes and it made you more reliant on god to carry you through mm -hmm. if you, if you, sometimes when we don't go through those things it doesn't develop our character to the point that it would be if everything was just smooth all all along that's true. That's true. After I suffered from depression for a while and got yeah. over the depression part yeah. and then was able to, I can tell you, my sister can tell you, I went through that depression part because I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm, like I said, I'm on the other side of it where I'm able to give myself. Mm -hmm. And so not only opening. are you able to give yourself, you are mm -hmm. now in a position to help somebody else who's going through what you just came Amen. out of. Yes. Amen. Right. That's why, that's why, Pat, you you are you you are a great listener. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, you're a great friend to me, which mm -hmm. you know, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm being you know uh, selfish. But, um, no, but she she that's why I feel that she is such a good deacon because she is a great listener, mm -hmm. and people can come to you 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 think it's just oh that's just what it is but people come to you and 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 talk to you because mm -hmm. you're a great listener and you're like a vault it's like it, when it's there it's there mm -hmm. and so like and probably some of the things the hurt that you've been through the depression and all those kind of things makes you um um a very compassionate and understanding person that you know you can understand a person that may be depressed on something opposed to if someone came to me i may not have a full and true you know understanding am, am i making sense yeah yes. mm -hmm. right right thank you know, you. we get thank we get in a we get in a crash course in emotionally healthy discipleship <laughs> This is a <laughs> all right so there's some more to this 
but but what you would learn what you would learn to do is is you go back to number one you'd go back to oh, go back to god be before you yeah. go be before you do when you go yeah. go back and spend yes. time with god to be what yeah. replenish yes yeah all right the surrendering the surrendering there you go. all right and, and allow him think uh, remember the the wilderness and Jesus in Mark chapter one. He's driven to the yeah. wilderness mm -hmm. by Satan. Yes. What happens at the end of it? The mm -hmm. angels minister to him. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. right. Okay. So so I want us to see that it's 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 not just putting yourself out there, but it's also going back to God. You know, getting going back to God for your for your needs for mm -hmm. your Amen. personal development for your for mm -hmm. your healing for you know for for your for your restoration and all of that so 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 we're going to be we're going to be weaving this in in with our study okay we're weaving it in uh hope y'all can follow are you following mm -hmm. tonight pretty good yes, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. okay um so so we will we'll, we'll uh, next week we don't meet it's revival week next week. Amen. 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 But, but if you get the outline, you can see where it's outlined. The biggest thing that that following Jesus I, I see is when you radically change, you're going to experience conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> Why do you say that? It's so true. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to experience conflict. And, and, yes. and when you read uh, Mark chapter two, one through three, six, you're going to see that he was rejected by the people that should have received him most, the religious mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't start out ministering in the street. He was going into the synagogues. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. Teaching in there, they, they rejected him in, in three, six. Mm -hmm. they yeah. plotted how to destroy him in 3c now listen Isn't if you're following jesus guess what's going to happen somebody's going to be trying to figure out how to bring you down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you right amen. amen i mean amen. when you really get that peace and 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 you had that aura about you you know when stuff ain't getting on your nerves no more people gonna try to find a way to get on your nerves okay. yes amen, amen. Right. No, I had somebody tell had somebody tell me a long time ago um, mm -hmm. that if um, somebody knows that they can get on your nerves by doing X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and every time they did X, Y, and Z, you did the same thing. Your reactions were the same. <laughs> uh -huh. If you just if you did like you said a number one, mm -hmm. just be where you're aware of yourself. You're aware of what you're doing. You're aware of what people are doing to you to make you act a certain way. And mm -hmm. you just stop it and you just change and have the presence of mind just to take a step back and watch. Mm -hmm. And when the, the person is trying stop. to do X, Y, mm -hmm. and Z mm -hmm. to, to get the same reaction. And when you don't react the same, when they no longer can get that juice flowing in you, yeah. they will they do change. anything. They will do all kinds of other things to try to bring that out of you. And when they realize that it's there no more, it actually they just they fizzle on. out and go away. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Now I'm trying to be very good stewards with your time. So, okay. so we, we, sorry. We, no, that's okay. I, I mean, I want you to give feedback because this is Bible study and what discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But but I want you to see how I'm trying to make sure that we're weaving in discipleship with this. We're not just reading mm -hmm. the Bible for information. Right. Okay. I can outline mm -hmm. it for you. And I can mm -hmm. tell you about what Jesus, but I want to get you to the deep level where you the are going to be transformed. There you go. Yes. Yes. Where the yes. transformation is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And and where you wrestle uh you know you're starting to make progress when you start saying this is hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. hard. To live this life <laughs> is not really easy. No. no. It, it, if your flesh is not battling you, mm. then you might be taking the easy route. Mm -hmm. But when you're struggling with, 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 with being obedient and you say, no, I'm going to submit to God. You know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this God's way. 
you know. Mm-hmm. I, watch this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to follow Jesus. Because mm-hmm. okay. no, ma- no matter what they did to Jesus, guess what he kept doing? Preaching, teaching, and healing. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. No matter what they did to him, he kept doing that. Preaching, mm-hmm. he, he was, he was uh, obedient to God. He, was, yeah. he had a greater yeah. purpose, and he wasn't about the crowds. He wasn't about impressing the religious leaders. He wasn't about any of Amen. that. Uh, mm-hmm. He was about pleasing God. Yes. Amen. Because what? He is, Mark presents him as the, the promised servant of God. Mm-hmm. And if yes. he is the master, if he is the focus of our lives, then we should be striving to be what? The servant like, of like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So it's making sense to you. So hold on yes. to this other part. Uh, you know, uh, basically what's happening is I'm, I'm swapping them around. So last time I closed on the emotionally healthy stuff. This time mm-hmm. I'm closing on the Bible piece. Amen. And, uh, and so we'll pick up the Bible piece next time, two weeks from now. Uh, you don't have to get too much further than uh, chapter three. Mm-hmm. So, you can, so you can focus on being revived and being preached to next week. Yes, amen. 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 All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are there any, any questions or comments as we get ready to close? God bless you. Uh, We love you, everybody. Uh, I think if we take it this way, I think it's going to really help us grow deeper. Uh, If you you really want to get deep, uh, uh, check out the book, Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. Uh, uh, And I may talk about an assessment they give you uh, and see how I can get that converted. So we may talk about that a little bit after we do the Bible next time. And that's two weeks from now. All right. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good discussion tonight. Very good discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deacon Pat. Yes. You feel, you feel like praying? Yes. Always. Always. I love that. <laughs> wait. 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 Let me do that again. So you can. T- <laughs> <laughs> Pat, you feel like praying? Always. <laughs> All right. Make me feel good. <laughs> Bless your heart. Bless your heart. All right then, Deacon Pat. Would you close us out? And yes, we, we appreciate you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Lord, we'd like to thank you for this evening. We'd like to thank you for our pastor teaching us how to be an emotionally stable disciple. Lord, thank you for Mark teaching us about discipleship and thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and ask questions and be healed and grow. Lord, we would like to take this opportunity once again to thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. As we take this week off, I ask that you look over us individually and collectively. As as we will not be studying the Bible, we will be in revival. We will be reviving our spirits, so we will be able to come back even stronger and, and more willing and needing to learn more of your word. Lord, just look over each and every one of us and this i ask in your son's name jesus to christ amen 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 amen